with Plexus. Got it. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm Lauren Davis, and I'm a senior review with Plexus. Um, I have been with Plexus for five years. Um, I've been around, I feel like, for, for a really long time. I feel like I've gone through Plexus with a lot of changes from the very beginning. Um, I actually started with Plexus when we didn't really have systems in place. We didn't really know what we were doing. Um, we were just kind of winging it and rolling with the punches. And we have grown a lot in the past five years. Um, Jordan's entire team, um, we've actually implemented systems that work really well. So if you follow the systems, they work. Um, I'm actually going to pull the chat up. Can I pull the chat up? There we go. Um, so tonight I am going to be talking on retention, um, but more specifically on retention, I'm going to be talking about troubleshooting um, because I feel like I'm a very good troubleshooter. I'm going to toot my horn on that. Um, I am a very analytical person. Um, and so I'm very good at question asking. Um, you can ask anybody on my team. Um, if they have a question, I will always ask them a question to help them figure it out themselves. Um, but first, I just wanted to share some photos of um, some past leaders retreat um, events that I have gone to. Um, and I just want to tell you guys, leaders retreat is the place you want to go. Like, it is so much fun. I feel like you're just treated like royalty. Um, if you're on Saturday's call um, this past weekend and heard, you know, all the girls talking about it, like it's legit. It's so much fun. Um, these pictures from 2019, I think that was our entire team right there in the with the face paintings. Um, it was a very small group of people, um, but it was a lot of fun. Um, it was actually it was a themed event obviously because we're all dressed up um and then the picture above we earned these checks and it was super cool to like walk through the airport with these big checks and people asking you like oh my gosh like how did you get that what's the check for um and then on the right was just this past year um and obviously you can see the team has grown a lot more and there's a lot more leaders on our team going to leaders retreat now so um, it's just super encouraging and super, super exciting to see like how much growth has happened. Um, but I was going to have Jessica Nunez, um, our little Enneagram 7 firecracker, share her experience of her first leaders retreat um, just to give you an idea from her perspective. So Nunez, if you're on, I can't see you, but go ahead and start talking. I'm here. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Sorry, I just got out of church, so I'm literally in the car. Hold on, not yet. <laughs> um, okay, so my first experience was last year. Um, and Lauren, was that the first time that I met you? Yes, it was. We met, so Jessica and I met on Instagram, for those of you who don't know, and we met for the first time at Leaders Retreat last year. So if you think you don't know anybody, and you're saying, I'm not going to go to leaders retreat because I don't know anybody. That's a big fat lie. Because when you get there, y'all, I didn't know anybody. Um, and it's li it literally feels like family. Like everybody's like, you you have that, what is it, face? You put the face, the name to the person, whatever. You know what I mean. But I mean, I remember walking up to the Gaylor, um, this fancy hotel that I've never been to. Um, and I saw Kimmy and I saw, I don't know, even know who else. And it was just like, we ran and like, if we knew each other for like ever. Um, so it's so, so fun. I was able to take, um, my husband and he was able to see like all of Plexus, like literally the hotel was like covered in Plexus and it was so cool to see, um, the, the uh I guess like the parties I guess and all like the dinners like everything was like top notch above and beyond like they just spoil the heck out of you and um every time that we went I was like oh my gosh like this is for us like it was so crazy so my first experience was amazing and very 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 belief building for me um because I was literally looking around and I'm just like wow, like I'm, I'm around these people that I see on trainings. I'm around these people that I see on our team calls and 
and I could be just as successful as they are, you know, and it's really awesome to see. Um, my husband was like, wow, this is amazing um, that I was able to take him for free. And it was it was a huge blessing. So I had a lot, a lot of fun. And I and I remember walking into I, I don't even know what party it was or what dinner it was and they were like hi come in and go ahead and pick your gift like I felt like every every time we walked into like a party or something or a dinner or something it was like and pick your gift and I was just like oh my god like they literally showered us with with gifts and like food and like it was was just it was so so fun like it was really really fun and and really belief building me um and, and um, belief building for my husband too. I mean, he already supports me. Like, I mean, I can c- have all these crazy I- ideas and stuff and he supports me, but it was just cool to bring him for free and, um, him be spoiled as well by Plexus. So yeah, that's my experience. So get on that cruise ship. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure during convention contest, she was a, you were a gold and you were going for senior gold around that period so if you're silver senior silver gold senior gold like this contest is for you like get to moving um so all that to say is leaders retreats awesome um and a very important way to get there is through retention which is what i'm going to be covering tonight um so over the course of the next four weeks i believe we're going to be talking about the four pillars y'all don't know what they are it's recruiting retention duplication and leadership um you cannot grow a team without recruiting you cannot maintain a team without retention um you will not advance without duplication and you will not have a legacy business without leadership um so if you're missing one of these components you will not grow to where you want to go um sorry do i need to mute people we're good Okay. Um, so how does retention fit into leaders retreat? And I believe Katie covered this, but I'm just putting this in here just so y'all are aware. And so y'all know. Um, so remember back in March when it was the iPad month, I believe, and everybody was signing up people like crazy and earning iPads, every single person that you added from March through now, you get retention credits, which is a huge deal. And this month they're doubled. I know if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. So level one ambassador for, re- for retaining someone who continues to order, you get 30 points per level one. Um, and for level two, you get 10 points this month. So retention credits are a huge deal for anybody that you've signed from March leading till now. Um, so that's why retention is so important for this contest. Um So one of the first things that I think is super important with retention is the relationship. Um, You cannot, I don't think that you can keep people in an authentic way without having a relationship with them. Um, You cannot make it all about plexus. You cannot attach a dollar sign with people um, because it becomes off, it comes off very salesy and very fake. Um, So whatever you have to do to build a relationship with your people, maintain that relationship with your people, um, you need to work on that. Um, and if you're like, I don't know how to build a relationship with people, go figure it out, go read a book, go find someone that's really good at it and watch them and follow them and what they do. Um, something that I have found super helpful when it comes to relationship building is try to figure out what these people, what your people's color personalities are, because you can connect with them on so many different levels. If you truly know them, um, and figure out what, makes them happy. Um, Like Jessica Nunez, for example, I know she loves parties. I know she loves fun. She's a super outgoing person. Um, Like she loves all the people. I am not that person. So we're not going to connect on the same things that drive us and motivate us. Um, So first and foremost, as far as retention, I think relationship building is a huge component of that. Um, The second thing with retention is hang on, excuse me. (laughs) When you're enrolling people, um, I always ask for a 90 day commitment. Um, one, because if you're not upfront with them and telling them this is not an overnight fix, this is not a quick fix. Um, you're doing them a huge disservice because if they go into this thinking, Oh, all my issues are going to be cured in 30 days. 
Um, and then 30 days is up and they're like, why didn't I lose 50 pounds or why isn't my gut completely healed? Um, then it's just, you're, I mean, it's just, it kind of turns into a mess. So upfront, tell them, be honest with them and say, this is not a quick fix. Um, give me 90 days um, and just and talk to them about it and tell them about the process. Um, one, the 90 days is a huge deal for you as far as retention, um, because most people who can stick it out to 90 days are going to continue to order long term. Um, so they're not only going to order from you this month and next month and the next month, they're probably going to keep ordering from you until next year. Um, so ask for commitment up front, get them on the phone. I found that to be the most successful um, is getting on the phone with people when you enroll them. Um, the next thing is when you're on the phone with them, walk through their virtual office with them. Um, show your VIPs how to use the referral link. Um, I would not talk to them about going silver. I would not say the word silver in the conversation personally, because they don't know what that means. It can be kind of scary and intimidating. Um, so I would just show them how to use the referral link. Hey, when you start loving your products, this is your referral link. Um, and if you want to share it with your mom or your sister or a best friend that you know that struggles with these things, um, you can send them your, your referral link and you can actually earn, you know, credit towards products for the for next month or whatever. Um, show them how to navigate their back office. Show them how to find the shareables. Um, and then I always show them how to um, navigate like their Plexus perks and what that means, how they can earn them, how they can redeem them, how they can earn free product. Um, because that's such a huge thing that we didn't used to have with Plexus. We didn't used to have Plexus perks. We didn't used to have Pivotal, which is our free workout program. We didn't used to have the free um, the free recipes. So all of these things that are in our virtual office are like such great tools for retention. Um, and they're for free. Like our company literally gives us all of these things for free. Um, so just make sure that you are utilizing those things. Oh, it's me. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you. Um, and then the last thing as far as retention is troubleshooting. Um, and this is kind of the part where I'm going to dive into a little bit more on troubleshooting just because I love to ask questions. Um, <clears throat> but the first thing is to make sure that you're making customer care a priority, especially in their first 30 days. Um, and there's a great video out there that um, that was a Plex, it was on the Plexus Ambassador community wall that Brooke Hemingway did and Emily Gibson um, and a few others. And it talks about the four pillars. Um, and Emily Gibson did the one on retention and she talked about how she, Whenever she signed someone up, and if like three or four days after she signed them up, she would write their name down and say, check in with so-and-so. And then a week later, she would write down the same thing, check in with so-and-so. And then two weeks, her second week mark, she would say, check in with so-and-so. Um, just so that she was aware and she knew exactly who she had to check in with and on what day. Um, but those first 30 days when people are starting their products are super crucial. Um, and so if you're making customer care Sorry, someone's calling me. Can y'all still see my screen? Fuzzy. Did it go away? It says, yeah, it's just like, oh, it's there now. I'm sorry, guys. Someone just called me. I ended the call. Don't worry. Um, so um, make customer care a priority. I don't remember where I was, but you know what that means. Um, ask good questions listen more and talk less. <clears throat> and I will say in the very beginning, way back in the day, before we I, had systems, before we knew what we were doing, I talked way too much. I thought that I had to be the expert. I thought that I had to just give all of these people, all of this knowledge, all of my experience in like one text message. So I go through like, it's so bad. I've been through like old conversations that I had with people that I signed up like five, four or five years ago. And I kid you not, my text messages to them are pages long. And I'm like, if I were you, I would have never signed up with me because that was awful. So if you're talking way too much, quit doing that. You need to talk less, listen more and ask good questions. Why is this not working now? Ah, 
here we go. Okay, so here's some customer qu care questions. And if y'all wanna write this down or if you wanna screenshot them, you can. Um, but kind of like I was saying in your like planner or your iPhone or however you keep track of when you need to check in with your people on customer care, um, these are just some great questions that you can ask um, as far as checking in. So in your first few days, I'm always like super excited. Can't wait for your products to get in. Have they arrived? Um, and I also send them a what to expect video or there's a couple of videos out there that are really good that talk about what to expect or dosage or um, going through detox or anything like that. So I kind of, they already have that information at their fingertips. So they kind of already know what to expect. Um, so have your products arrived? Have you tried a pink drink? What did you think of the flavor? Um, the last thing that you want to do is, oh my gosh, did you try the pink drink? How much energy did you have? Or, you know, were you less bloated or, you know, any question that's going to make them like stop and question and think, oh, well, I didn't have immediate energy after drink that pink drink or, oh, I'm not, you know, noticing any less bloating. So then they start to question, like, are these products legitimate? Is this working for me? Maybe I'm not a candidate. Um, so make sure to ask them open-ended questions that's not going to make them question whether or not they made a bad or good decision. Um, so week one, um, ask some, again, open-ended questions. Have you found a good routine with your supplements? Are you drinking enough water? Um, tell me about your routine. Tell me about your regimen. <clears throat> and then week two, I'll say something like, you know, week two, I started noticing a little, you know, a little less bloating, or I noticed that my blood sugar wasn't crashing every single afternoon. Um, you may not experience anything like that, but I thought I'd ask, are you, any, are you experiencing any small changes um, since you've been on these products? Again, nothing like, oh my gosh, how much weight have you lost? Or um, how deep are you sleeping? Or, you know, just questions that can make them think that if they don't answer it correctly, that it's not working for them. Um, so if you need to make changes or anything to their dosage, you can start doing that week two. And then week three, you um, can check in on them on, you know, how they're doing with the changes that you made. Um, and then also it's a great time to remind them about their upcoming subscription. Um, so if they need to add some products or if they need to move things around, um, just so that they're aware that their subscription is about to process. <clears throat> okay, so my favorite part, troubleshooting. So these are, I would say, questions that you need to keep in your back pocket. And these are things that you always need to be aware of um, when you're talking to your VIPs. Um, so always know, why did they start Plexus? What were their initial health goals or their health struggles? Do they take medications or any additional supplements? Um, what is their current Plexus regimen? How is their diet and how is their water intake? I would say those are like the most basic questions that you can ask to troubleshoot, to figure out what's, why something's happening. If they're having any kind of issues, if they're like, oh my gosh, I'm pooping too much, or I have headaches, or I'm tired, or I'm gaining weight or whatever it is, you can typically figure out why they're experiencing what they're experiencing just by knowing these questions. Okay. So I'm going to give you some examples. So let's take this first question. I'm pooping way too much. I mean, we've heard it, or I'm not pooping enough, or I'm constipated or whatever. So as long as you know all of these questions, you can typically figure out why they're pooping too much. So why did they initially start Plexus? Maybe they were pooping too much to begin with. You know, maybe they already had IBS before they started Plexus and it's not gotten any better. Um, or maybe they're taking a magnesium supplement on top of their BioCleanse. And so, and that's something that would be helpful information to know as to why they're pooping too much. Um, I've ran into that a lot. I'm like, okay, what additional supplements or medications are you taking? They're like, and they'll send me a photo and it's like magnesium fiber pills or whatever. And it's like this whole cabinet full of poop pills on top of them taking BioCleanse. So there's questions you can typically figure out why they're having those issues. Um, so here's another example. I've been super shaky, like blood sugar shaky. Okay. So again, why did you start? Why did they start Plexus? Think of that in the back of their head. Were they hypoglycemic before? Like, did they have blood sugar issues before? Or maybe that wasn't a problem or maybe it was. Um, are they taking any additional supplements or medications? 
Um, what is their current plexus regimen? Maybe they didn't order the pink drink. Maybe they ordered a different combo that doesn't have the pink drink in it. Um, how is their diet and how is their water intake? So a few things that could happen um, when, if someone says, I've been shaky, you can ask them immediately, how is your diet? What have you eaten today? Um, and if they're like, oh, well, I ran out the door because I didn't have time to eat breakfast. So I stopped and got a donut on the way to work. And then I got so busy at work and I forgot to eat lunch, but I had my pink drink, but then I started getting shaky and I couldn't figure out why. Okay, well, there's your, there's the reason, there's why they're shaky. Um, so just with those simple questions that you're asking, you found out that they didn't eat anything all day, pretty much no protein, and they had a sugary donut and a pink drink. So great troubleshooting question right there. You figured out why they're shaky. Um, I don't have my comments chat pulled up so if there's questions just someone just raise a hand or something i don't know where they went um okay here's a few here's a few more examples and these are just triplex troubleshooting questions but you can really use these like questions to navigate or troubleshoot any kind of products um here's one i've heard before my heart is racing so we all know <laughs> that plexus like a probiotic and a magnesium pill is not going to make your heart skyrocket like it's it, I'm just not going to that's not what these products are meant to do it's not what they're going to do um so again go through go through these questions um figure out you know what they had for breakfast that morning maybe they skipped breakfast again and maybe they just had coffee and maybe they took a meta burn maybe they took an edge with their coffee maybe they skipped breakfast so it's just like a lot of caffeine you know and no protein nothing to balance it out so it's most likely not related to triplex. It's probably something external that they did. Um, I'm not losing weight. I've heard this one a lot. I'm not losing weight. It's like, like a month when they're like, I'm not losing weight. It's these, you know, these products aren't working. I'm not losing weight. Um, a lot of times, like, especially if you have an autoimmune disorder and you deal with a lot of inflammation, you're not going to lose weight super quick. I was one of those people. I don't think I started losing weight till I was like month four um, is when I'd start, like I started noticing the scale sh shifting, um, because it takes time. It takes a lot of time for your body to heal. Um, and so something to think about is why did they initially start plexus? Maybe they started plexus because they have thyroid issues or because they have endometriosis or PCOS or whatever it is. So you kind of know that in the back of your head so that you can troubleshoot and you can ask specific questions and navigate the conversation away to make it look like or make it make them understand and know that this is not a quick fix and they're not going to lose weight overnight. Um, and another thing is, how is your diet? Maybe their their diet isn't the greatest, and maybe they eat donuts for breakfast and they go through the Chick Fil A drive through, and maybe they don't cook meals at home, or maybe they're still drinking their Dr Pepper's or eating ice cream on the weekends, or maybe they just got back from a cruise, a week long cruise, and they came back and I'm not losing weight. So again, all of these troubleshooting questions, you can typically navigate and pinpoint why they're having the problems that they're having. Okay, <clears throat> so those are my troubleshooting retention questions. So keep those in the back of your, keep those in the back of your noggin. Um, but here's some other retention ideas um, and just things that have worked in the past. Our team, at, one is team events. So Pretty much every single month, we have some sort of team event, whether it's a sample group or whether it is a like a story, like a live story group where we're doing giveaways or maybe there's like an inflammation challenge or an energy challenge or whatever it is. Um, team events are a great way not only to like add new people to, but also to bring back people who may have turned their subscriptions off or who may not be ordering anymore. Like these are great to get people plugged back into. People love accountability. People love doing things with other people. They don't like doing things by themselves. Um, so if you can get people plugged into events, that's a great way to get people back. And hopefully they'll continue to order because they're seeing results. Um, the next thing is help your people make a post. Um, if you, you help your people make a post and maybe their friends see it and they want to do it with them, they're naturally going to help other people get started. They might naturally go silver. They might naturally happen to go gold before they know it. Um, and when people start earning paychecks, people stay longer, I promise. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe they don't stay right now. Maybe they leave after a few months, but they always come back. People always come back with Plexus, whether it's the finances, 
um, the community, the products, whatever it is, like people always come back. Um, something else you can do is give them people, um, Plexus people to follow on social media. So a lot of times when I'm signing up people, um, I kind of get to know the person. I understand who they are. I kind of know their interests. Um, and I'll send them a list of Plexus people that I think they can connect with. Um, that way they're not only seeing Plexus posts for me, but they're seeing it from other people. And it just helps validate that Plexus is legit because I might be their only friend on social media that's sharing about Plexus. Um, and so if you give them somebody else to follow, it just kind of solidifies and validates that what we're doing is not actually crazy. Um, another thing is connect them with your sponsor. So maybe you haven't done three-way chats in a while, um, but three-way chats are a great way to help um, new VIPs get on board um, and also stay connected with Plexus, stay connected with the group, um, and kind of like following people on social media. It just gives them another reason, um, another person to ask questions to, to reach out to, to follow, um, to get inspiration from, um, just to connect with um, that's, you know, that's also taking Plexus. Um, another thing, is send them a sample of something new. So maybe you had a VIP order and all they ordered was the triplex. Um, maybe they didn't order anything else. Well, that might be a great opportunity for you to send them a stick of hydrate or maybe a stick of active, um, especially if you know kind of what their health goals are or their health struggles. Um, like maybe it's a new mom and she's just lacking energy um, and she's just tired all the time. It'd be a great way to send her a stick of active or Maybe it's someone who is super athletic and works out a lot. Maybe they want height. Maybe you want to send them a stick of hydrate um, just as a great Gatorade alternative. Um, so sending somebody a sample of something new that they haven't tried or haven't ordered. Um, and even just like a sweet thank you note, like it truly goes a long way. Um, I actually order products from another network marketer and she's always sending me like sweet little samples or something I've never tried or notes. And yeah, I keep ordering because I keep trying new things. And I'm like, this actually works. This is really cool. I love this product. So I, it's, it's a great reason for me to go and buy it for myself because I tried it and I loved it. Um, and the last thing is mindset. Um, if you're constantly telling yourself, oh, I'm, I'm so bad at retention. Nobody wants to be on my team. Nobody wants to reorder. Oh my gosh, I don't want to look at my back office. Like I have so many white lines, like. I can't keep anybody on my team, blah, blah, blah. You're right. If you have that mindset, like you're right. Nobody wants to be on your team if you're going to throw yourself a pity party. Um, but if you have the mindset of, I am great at retention. I am so good at retention. Like I can keep people. I know how to do this. If you go into it confidently, like you have a much better success rate of keeping people on your team and ordering from you if you have that mindset. Um, I think that is all. That was an abrupt way to end. But those <laughs> those are my tips on retention. And I do think I'm this is over because it's not going anywhere. She said, I think this is over. We've had several people ask for slides. So could you save those and share them with us? Yes. Stop. Okay. Please, please, and thank you. Um, anybody else love when Lauren trains because she breaks it down so beautifully and it's just so simple and it just makes your life so happy and you're like, where has this been my whole life? Every time she trains, every time. Do y'all have any questions for her on anything we just learned? Attention questions, anything that y'all just heard? Just give it a minute and then. I'm going to go for this chat real quick. Yeah, if y'all have any questions that you chatted, I did not see any of the chat. So if you have a question, I'm happy to answer them. We failed and flopped until we figured it out. Yeah, we did. Hmm. Lauren, um, somebody asked me this the other day because I have, I now, I mean, after seven years of doing this, however long, I now have like a pre-printed card that I just, I send all my newbies. But what, like, tell, what do you suggest when it comes to like somebody just starting out? What what are you sending? Like, what, do you, what, what would you suggest sending somebody who's purchased product from you? Well, I actually have a sample saved in my agenda app. I can send that to the, um, the success steps thread. I can send that to you guys. Um, but I also know Randy page is very creative and very artistic. And I know she's created a bunch of 
um, fun little graphics too. So if creating graphics and making your own cards isn't your jam, like somebody else on this team has an immense gift that is really good at doing that. Um, but I typically just do some like handwritten and a lot of times I'm at work. And so sometimes it's like on the back of my paper doll line sheets, or it's on the back of, you know, it's something easy, but it's to the point they know, like it's coming for me. Um, but yeah, it's really easy. And I will say, I recommend sticking it in, um, just an envelope, like a flat envelope and not a mailer. Cause like the mailers, like the bubble wrap mailers are really expensive to mail things. So I know Kimmy Lyons is also really good at knowing what to and what not to send as far as keeping costs down. So I shared a post in HHFF with some sample tips and I even included the Amazon link to my um, flat mailers. They're not bubble mailers, but they're flat and they're plastic. And I got a hundred for $8 and it's about $6 a sample to send. Um, I'm in Texas and I typically send within Texas, but it's about six bucks to send four sticks. Um, and that's a pretty good price. So go look in health, happiness, and financial freedom for some sample tips. I, I, y'all, until I was like diamond, I just did a handwritten card and just sent them like a stick of hydrate and just thank, thank you for choosing me to be your coach. Like this does not have to be fancy. What else? What y'all want to know? Any retention questions or like contest questions? Chelsea, did you have a question? I, I did. I was going to say, I'm sorry because because I definitely forgot my question. I know it was a clarifying question around like your system though, Lauren. Um, so I'm sorry, I may come back to you and ask that, but let me think for another minute and see if I can remember, because I did have a question. Okay. How much stuff do you keep on stock uh, whenever to send out to y'all? I, I personally, I just typically have like, I, okay, let's be real here. I have a lot of extra things. Um, but Lauren, how would you answer that question? <laughs> yeah. So in the beginning, like when I was a brand new baby ambassador, I did not have a whole lot of extra to send. Like I just didn't have a whole lot of extra. Um, so if you're in that boat, you can always reach out to your sponsor and work out a deal with them because those of us who have been around for a long time have accumulated a lot of stuff. Um, so anytime there's incentives or a reason to buy extra, like we typically do. Um, and so if you don't have a whole lot of extra, like if you're just starting out and you don't have like a whole lot of extra of samples to send, I would get with your sponsor and work something out. I remember I Jessica, go ahead. a year or two, like you'll accumulate a lot. I remember Jessica Heffley did an incentive one time and it, it was like for a free bag of uh, Slim or something. And I was like, hell or high water, I'm getting that. Because I didn't have enough money to go buy an extra bag of Slim. So I was like, I am earning that bag of Slim so I can send my dream teamers some samples. And so, Or use your Plexus perks. I know I've heard someone do that before. Um, if you don't have money to buy extra stuff, use your Plexus perks to get a bag of active or hydrate um, or whatever to use those as samples. Are we still using the Engage app and are we still getting free sample credits with that? No, it's vetoed. Okay. I don't know anything. Disregard. It's, it's okay. <laughs> it was here for it was here for a good time, but not a long time. All right. Anything else for Lauren, you guys? Was this helpful for y'all? I know it was really helpful for me. It was a very good refresher. And if you haven't gotten your plan on paper. And including retention credits, go do it. Even if you put it in the thread and we're like, dude, that is not any, that's not even, you're not even on the right page. Like we can still help you figure it out from there. You got to start though, start, go get it on paper. Okay, Lauren, thank you so much. Josh is getting married next month, but I do think that we should all just, everyone, every one of us, there's, there was 50 on, just everyone go message her and remind her that she needs to train us more. Okay. Okay, great. Lauren, go check your inbox. Okay, bye.